A new study finds artificial intelligence could help predict pancreatic cancer. The discovery could lead to more early detection of the disease and potentially save lives. Dr. Chris Sanders is one of the co-authors of that study, and he joins us now. Uh, this sounds, uh, doctor, uh, good to see you. It does sound potentially groundbreaking. What were the most significant findings of the study? So we found a substantial increase in the accuracy of predicting pancreatic cancer using uh, AI on health records from 9 million patients. And this was possible because of international <clears throat> collaboration between Denmark and institutions in Boston, such as Veterans Administration, Dana Farber Cancer Institute, MIT, the Broad and Harvard Institutes. And this is important because currently there's no screening for pancreatic cancer. Uh, it's too expensive. And the idea is to, and here's a scenario how it would work in the future, have a healthcare system with a million patients. You would run the AI software that we've now developed and to be improved in the future routinely at low cost for the million patients. And then you nominate uh, a, a thousand patients at highest risk to do, to do screening. And this is done in consultation between the patient and their physicians. Uh, it's decision support for the physician. And then these screening programs can use expensive tests such as CT scans, MRIs, endoscopic ultrasound to actually detect the cancer early. And the impact of this will be that then the next step would be to detect the cancer early using those expensive tests, which otherwise are not affordable if you don't have a high risk population. And then number three, to actually have improved methods to treat people early. So I think that in the future, what we anticipate that this will gradually change the landscape of cancer care from the very late cancer treatment, which is very expensive and often too late, mm -hmm. has lots of side effects to increasingly earlier treatment that would be a benefit to patients and also to the economy. Um, you know, we have been doing a lot of stories about AI and it's always sort of doom and gloom. AI is coming for your job. But this, this is sort of thing that AI does exceptionally well, right? You've got this massive amount of data that would take a really long time to go through and organize, but you give, you know, the proper software, the right marching orders, and you're able to come up with these sort of markers. And if anyone's familiar with pancreatic cancer, as you point out, often it's only detected very late stage and the descent can be incredibly rapid. Someone's diagnosed and you know, a few months later, uh, they passed away. So I think this is really, really interesting. My question to you is, can you apply this same concept to other cancers, uh, you know, for may maybe breast cancer. So the requirement for to, to have sort of screenings as frequently aren't necessary, or only the people who are most at risk would get those screenings, or any other cancers that, that we've just, that have been very challenging for us to get ahead of. That definitely is the, is the case. That will take more time, mm -hmm. but we uh, will be able to apply this across all cancer types in time. This will take some time collaborating with clinicians. Uh, and the prospect is that in time with more data and with people's participation, we'll be able to have people's clinical histories that can be used by AI to pinpoint who's at highest risk and who can then get those expensive tests. And patients can help to support this research by donating their data, for example, for the National Institute of Health, the joinallofus.org program, where they can get free of charge, the genomic information decoded, they can opt in to upload their clinical histories in a protected environment and researchers and clinicians can then use that to do an even better job applying AI methods for cancer risk followed by detection and diagnosis across all cancer types. Wait, can you repeat that, the, the organization or the website? Joinallofus.org. Okay, so that this is, is also a federal great. program by the National Institutes of Health that will be a huge benefit, currently a million people and growing mm. a national program. So I also want you to reinforce, because people are very concerned about giving sensitive information to this you know, giant da database, that, that there are extensive uh, things in place to protect private in health information. Uh, there, there are both technical and political mechanisms in place to protect that in a way that's even better than the protection of healthcare information that you have in your local hospital. So this is assured, guaranteed, 
and it will be hugely beneficial if people donate their data to that organization and also work with the clinicians. If they have abdominal pain, diabetes type 2, talk to your doctor, make sure that you get, get looked at early for the possibility of pancreatic cancer and other cancers. Well, you just actually, my last question to you was going to be, can you give us an idea of some of the markers that AI kind of w was looking at? Are you looking at people's lifestyle? Are you looking at, you know, their, their health history? What are the sort of factors that you pour into this software? So into the software, you have health histories and also the blood values and also what kind of drugs people are taking and also images. And then when they are screened in the hospital, once this is taken on board, it will take a few years to actually go into clinical practice. Right. They will be subject to detailed imaging tests and advanced blood tests that are being developed uh, by companies as well as academia. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh I wish you luck with this research because it sounds like it could be game changing, not just for pancreatic cancer, but for others, uh, other types of illnesses as well. Chris Sander, thank you very much. Thank you.